will not be a factor with place kicks or punts. Feels like football tonight. It does. Here's Epps in motion again. They play fake to him. Evans is going to run it on his own. First down. Evans hurdling out to midfield with a nice run by the quarterback. Finally brought down by Jacob Radish. Also in there for Waynesburg was J.D. Higgins. Clint Potish trailing on the play, too. Ran all the way down the field. He looked like he was running through a minefield, zigzagging in and out, and trying to catch up with him. And I think what made the play work, I think Epps was the key, Chris. He had the nice run to play before. They faked to him, and lots of people checked that out. And all of a sudden, he was open while everybody else was looking at Epps. 31-yard gain on the play. Wow. Nice run by the quarterback. Alex Evans, wash high, first down and 10 from the midfield line. Epps fakes motion. They fake the pop pass, and now they throw downfield. Evans has a man open at the 20-yard line and not able to come in with the ball as C.J. Baker looking back at it. He drew double coverage, but he had the defenders beat by several steps. Oh, he might have been too fast for his own good, Chris. He was beyond his nearest defender, and I think if he slows his step, he could catch it higher as a result. Of, uh, we'll watch it again. I think he ends up trying to catch it more down at his knees. Reaches, but see how he reaches back a little bit. If he'd have just slowed up, there was double coverage back there, but he was wide open. He'll be the first one to tell you should have had it. And how ironic! The wobbly pass goes for the touchdown. The perfect <laughs> spiral gets dropped. That was a pretty ball by Evans. Second down and ten for Wash High. Epps goes in motion. They're going to give it to Winters. Winters will drive it forward. Still digging, even though the whistle blows. And <laughs> Winters doesn't want to uh, quit on that run as he moves forward to the 46. Again, Higgins with his helmet on the running back that time. You wonder, Winner's a Division I prospect, Chris. He's only six foot tall, six foot 250 and very talented. Is that big enough to play at the Division I mm -hmm. level with middle linebacker? Borderline. Yeah. Wash High guy is looking at third down and six. It's a tie ball game at seven all. Comcast High School football game of the week. Boy, we have a, a real good one next week. We'll be talking about Springdale and Duquesne in just a little bit. Wash High with the ball again. Epps driving forward. Epps inside the 40 to the 38 yard line. First down Wash High. John Ringer making the stop on the play, but not until Epps gets the first down. Yeah, five man front that time for uh, Waynesburg, and he got through that front immediately. Once that happens, it's a couple little side steps, and you know, uh, you got linebackers and defensive backs chasing you around back there, and it picked up a first down. Quick hitter, he got through the hole quickly. Good hard run. Been a hard hitting half. I'm impressed with how these teams are hitting. They're cracking each other on that line of scrimmage, aren't they? That's a good uh, uh, rivalry. In the last eight meetings, they're split right down the middle at four and four, although Washington has dominated recently, winning three of the last four. So since 1996, nothing's been decided. Four for each side. Epps in motion. Winners gets the handoff. Sheds one tackle. Higgins had him around the ankles, but he's still able to dart over to that right side for about a yard or two. Well, those are two big bruisers going at each other. Winters running the football. Higgins trying to tackle him, and it's vice versa when Waynesburg has the ball. Evans now two of five in the air for 63 yards in the game. I mentioned Washington, Chris, had a 98-yard. When they played, uh, they had a 98-yard drive to beat Katanning. 17 plays, 98 yards, and then they had a goal line stand to protect the lead, win the game 13 and 9. I'm starting to see now how they can drive the ball 98 yards. Second and nine, Epps play fake to him. Evans is going to carry it again. This was a play that got them big yards before, a 31 yard gain, and this time they're going to get maybe two out of this one as Paul Wolf comes in along with JJ Zupper. Evans' body English there at the end told me that wasn't exactly the way that was supposed to go. Uh, of course, every play is supposed to go to the end zone if it's blocked properly, but uh, it just looked like that broke down somewhere in there, and he was just on his own trying to make something happen. See, he, I don't know. That didn't look like it did, it looked funny to me. I, I could like, be Whoa. wrong, but yeah. Tim Stefanizzi in there also on the stop. It's third down and about eight yards to go for Wash High. Three carries, 37 yards for the quarterback, Alex Evans, the junior, for Wash High. Hey, this has to make Washington feel pretty good. And he had four first downs and 68 yards last week against Greenberg Central Catholic. Evans to throw, and Catlin turned a little bit late looking for the ball. I think Evans threw that ball a little faster, a little quicker than he wanted to, and 
Washai guy is now looking at fourth down and long. Yeah, he did, but I think it's still a pretty good decision because he didn't throw it in harm's way. He threw it outside the grasp of any Waynesburg defender, and with that much pressure, at least, he, you know, that's the kind of mistake a young quarterback will make and turn the ball over, and uh, at least uh, Washington still got a shot here on fourth and seven, and it looks like they're going to go for it. Oh, no. Nope. They're going to bring the punter in. There you go. And the punter is the backup quarterback, Chad Smith. So you got to be doubly aware of what he's doing back there. He can throw the ball. Oh, he Boy, can sky it, too. Wow. Waynesburg's going to run away from it. Washington's going to get the perfect bounce, and they are going to down the football deep in Waynesburg territory. So they're going to pin Waynesburg back just like they were pinned back in that last possession. Mark Montecalvo came down there and down the ball on the bounce. That makes you happy when you're a coach. Now, you think about where Washington took over, took the penalty. They were on the practically their own goal line. Move it downfield. The drive eventually stalls, but you get the perfect high kick. Good coverage by Montecalvo, and he wasn't the only one. There were three guys that could have downed that ball. That is good execution. That makes you smile as a coach. And while Waynesburg will see how they do in the shadow of their own goal post, they're on their own five-yard line. Bonas comes out, takes the snap. It'll be Higgins, and Higgins finds some breathing room for Waynesburg, almost a mirror image of the first play from scrimmage uh, in Washington's last possession when they were pinned back deep. This time, J.D. is going to drive that ball to the 14. Three minutes left, first half of play, tie game at seven. Higgins chugging for some tough yards, and here he goes again, shedding the tackle of Kyle Winters in the backfield, and then finally roped up as he turns the corner by Chris Barnes and company. Mana sends motion to the near side. Here comes a pitch. This is Scott Brockmorton slicing through the line to the 20, and a penalty flag will follow the play out to the 21-yard line. Mike Cutting, our referee tonight, he's been a busy guy. The flags have been flying. That's coming back. That's a hold against Waynesburg. Too bad, too, because the motion by Throckmorton really put him in a nice open position to pick Holding up the yardage. On the offense, still second down. I think Mike Cunning and his crew might be working on commission tonight. I'm not <laughs> sure if they Getting are. Paid by the penalty. It. Yeah, they're rolling in it if they are. If you look ahead to what these two teams have uh, left. Washington is East Allegheny and McGuffey on the road with a game against Brownsville right here in the middle. Waynesburg chalks up 275 yards per ball game on average. Right we now. have a timeout. Wait. Timeout Waynesburg. But Waynesburg, Chris, has Greensburg Central Catholic next week at home. Centurion's unbeaten, and they finish at Brownsville. And Brownsville's got a pretty good team. So... I think Waynesburg has a little tougher schedule the rest of the way, and like we said at the top of the show, the loser tonight pretty much eliminates himself from playoff consideration here. If Washington wins this game tonight, they would improve to four and two overall, but more importantly, two and two in the Interstate Conference, led right now by Jeanette Greensburg, Central Catholic, and McGuffey, who are all three and zero in the conference. Well, you talk about the schedule here in the Interstate Conference. Here's a look at what Waynesburg has uh, in the offing as, uh, as you were talking, Guy, but two of the teams in the Interstate Conference are undefeated coming into the weekend. Jeanette and Greensburg Central Catholic and Greensburg Central Catholic is averaging, uh, what, 47 and a half points a ball game and allowing just four. Yeah, they're, they're loaded. Uh, at, at this point of the season, it's not a stretch to say that, the, you know, they're the cream of the crop in the division, but Stuff can change, but they've been very impressive. Cree trying to take it left after the penalty yardage and the timeout were marked off, and he's going to be tackled inbounds over on the far sideline. The clock's going to continue to spin down near the 225 mark. You know what? And Waynesburg uh, very happy to let that clock continue to spin right now. Dave Sarah would like nothing more, I think, than to get out of here at 7 7. You're in harm's way down there right now, Chris. You don't want to make a mistake. You kind of probably feel you're not a passing team. You hate to put the ball in the air, yet here it is third down and seven. If you run a play, you're going to give them the ball at midfield, probably with a minute, minute and a half to work with. So uh, this is a tough situation to be in. You don't want to just give the ball back, but you don't want to do anything crazy with it either and turn it over deep down in your own territory in a tie game closing in on the half. Third down and eight. 
And Monis is in the end zone to throw, and he gets rid of it. It's going to be broken up. The pass was intended out to the near side for Dan Cross, and coming over to make the play defensively for Wash High was Alex Evans, who jumped up there and broke it up in midair. Dan Cross was open when he let go of the ball, but kind of a center field type play for Alex Evans coming over to knock the ball away. And that's one of the neat things about the, the two platoon system at this level. There's Alex Evans out there racing over, banging bodies, knocking the ball away. Now he's going to come out and play quarterback. <laughs> That's what kept guys more honest in the old days, Chris. You took a shot at somebody, he was going to get his chance to take one at you again when the possession changed. Isn't that the truth? Here's a punt by Cree. It'll be a line drive, but he gets it out of there, and it's going to be returned by Wash Eye. I'll say. It's going to be returned for the touchdown by Joe Monroe. He takes it all the way back, and Wash High jumps back out to the lead, 13-7 to with a buck 29 left. Joe Monroe returned to punt against Southmoreland 52 yards for a touchdown and returned to kick off 90 yards to start the second half in their game against Clareton. So that is his third touchdown on a return this year. And this is exactly what I was talking about, Chris, about the field position and the trouble that you're having down. The, you, they really Locking needed to get a first down. On blue. Oh, they're going to call it back. Oh, I didn't even see that. Joe Monroe returned it 42 yards for the touchdown, but a block in the back on blue is what Mike Cunning calls, and that's going to negate the whole thing, so we're still tied at seven. Oh, I did, did you see the flag? No, I, did I didn't not. see it either. Well, anyways, we got a preview of what Joe Monroe is capable of doing. <laughs> He's done it before this year, and now we'll know. Keep your eye on Joe Monroe. Well, Joe has one touchdown tonight. He thought he was going to get two, but no, nope, he's back down to one. That's just tough. There are his numbers so far. 51 yards. First still, down and 10. Chris, a minute and a half. They're on the 24-yard line. It's still an excellent chance to take the lead. Epps gets the toss, breaks a tackle, slides through. And Epps has big yardage and a big first down gain for Wash High. They have the ball in striking distance out of the 12. Well, one thing you like as we watch our DVR replay of that one here, Epps' run, the eight starters back for Washington. They're very experienced along the line. Andrew Miller and Ryan Pearson are both in their third year as starters. Sam Miller plays tackle on both sides of the ball, offense and defense, and we've seen some of that here tonight. you got some talented running backs back there. When these guys are blowing open some holes, they're tough to stop. The toss comes near side. Catlin. Taking a pounding at the 11-yard line, trying to spin it around the left end. And he was stacked up. John Ringer was there. Also, Sam Patton was behind the play. John Ringer's around the ball a lot. He really has a good nose for what's going on out there. And was kind of emphatic in his tackle. He wants to try to put up a stand here as we're under 45 seconds on the nine-yard line. 7-7 seven, seven game. Here's a pass to the end zone. And Cree will bat this one down for Waynesburg. Washington had a man in the end zone down on the far side corner, and that time C.J. Baker went up, and Cree was all over that ball before Baker could even see it land. You know what? I like that call, though. I like that call a lot. Evans threw a pretty nice ball there, and uh, again, you know, there's not, not quite quick enough. He was open for a second. It closed quickly. Part, Cree had some help back there, too. Also back there for Waynesburg was uh, Scott Throckmorton, but I like it. It's gutsy, and it stops the clock. Baker plowed into Throckmorton. He kind of set the pick for him, and Cree batted the ball down. Third down and long. Wash high with the ball. Evans in trouble, wants to get rid of it, and can't. And he was wrapped up immediately by Tim Stefanisi. The great defensive play that time for Waynesburg. Now what that does too, taking you back to the 16-yard line, you lose seven. It makes a little more difficult uh, field goal if you're thinking along those lines. Neither of these two teams big in the field goal department. So you go from the nine, now you kick it back. It's fourth down. You got 21 seconds to work with. We'll wait and see here what uh, Earl Finney elects to do. Forget our big halftime show is coming up. Val Doherty will be hosting that. We'll get to take a look at both the Waynesburg and the Wash High bands here this evening. And it's homecoming. Field. Boy, all the Washington kids, the boys and girls all dressed up real nice tonight. And the queen and her court or whatever they call it. She got the sashes <laughs> on going out there. And 
It's great stuff. What do you mean, whatever they call it? You, well, should, is it, what you, was you the, know that the stuff. The king in the court? The queen? No, uh, the qu is, well, there's a, is there a homecoming king here? Some see, I don't know. That's why I said whatever they call it. All right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> All the good-looking high school boys and girls are dressed up and yeah. wearing their Sunday best. That's right. Okay. That's why we'll I was always in the booth. <laughs> Never had to wear a tie to a football game. Well, they're going to try the field goal here. This is Owen Budovich, 5'11", 150, the senior kicker for Wash High. They will spot it at the 20. It's a 30-yard attempt. It has the distance. It has the height, but it curls out to the left. No good. 8 no for 11 good. in extra points this year, Chris, but no field goals yet, and uh, that remains the same. And that's a frustrating sequence of events for Washington. They returned the punt for a touchdown. It got called back, but even being called back, it's on the 24. They get a couple of big positive plays, get a uh, get the ball to the nine-yard line, and then the sack. The sack really killed them there, and a nice defensive stand for Waynesburg, and I'll imagine with 16 seconds left and the ball on their own 20 that they're just going to sit down and make it a one-half ball game. Well, they're in the victory formation, even though it's tied at 7-7, and we're just going to halftime. They're just trying to protect the football, and Mitch Monish will take the snap and get the clock running. And that appears to be the quarter, as you predicted, Mr. Junker. 7-7 ball game right now between Washai and Waynesburg. And these two teams are going at it tooth and nail, eyeball to eyeball, toe to toe out there on this football field. They're just chewing at each other. And right now, they're all tied up. Yeah, we'll call that the tie formation for tonight <laughs> instead of the victory formation, at least now, or the conservative formation. And it's a pretty entertaining half. 7-7, seven, seven, not, not a ton of offense, but I think penalties really uh, were the main bugaboo for Wash High. I think they could be a little more out. They obviously would be on the punt return. Were able to survive three of them on their touchdown drive, but uh, certainly want to clean some of that stuff up in the second half if they're going to go on here and beat a, a hard-hitting Waynesburg team here tonight. You know, we said in the beginning of the broadcast that Bill Britton is not coaching tonight because of the differences between the teachers union and the school board here in Washington, and he has uh, decided to honor the picket line. And uh, obviously, Earl Finney has taken over. It's uh, been a tough chore for him. And of course, uh, on the Waynesburg side, Dave Sara, uh, his uh, out there uh, coaching his club, and it's a pretty good ball game we've got going on, a 7-7 tie right now as we Get set to go to the coach's corner here on Comcast. And, uh, guy, we've got Coach Sarah uh, to start with uh, for Waynesburg. And, obviously, Coach, uh, your team did a, a heck of a job in uh, in coming back and, and, and getting this, this ball game tied up here after Washington scored on that big play. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we give up a big play, but uh, we came back, put a drive together, and... Uh, was able to tie the ball game up. That was big for us. Hey, Dave, it's really fun to watch your running game with Cree, Throckmorton, and Higgins out there. If you could just spend a second on each of those three guys, they're all very different type runners. I love watching Higgins. I was saying to Chris, it was like when we were playing tackle football without pads as kids. You can't bring him down without a rope. Well, I mean, like you said, they are three different styles. I mean, you know, Higgins, he gets to some tough yards. Um, he, you know, he breaks some tackles. Uh, you know, Cree, he has a big, well, actually, Cree and Throckmorton, they both have big, big play capabilities. Um, you know, we just got to get him involved a little more in the run game. Higgins right now, he carried us in the first half. Hopefully we can um, get the other two involved in the second half. We think the key is in the second half. Tie game, you're on the road. Well, I mean, same thing. You know, our defense sucked it up here at the end of the half. I mean, we had our backs to the wall. Um, you know, we could have gave up a touchdown or, or three. You know, we came, we're fortunate we come out tie ball game. Uh, you know, second half, you know, we got to continue. Uh, we got to move. The, we got to continue running the football and, uh, Defensively, you know, we, we, you know, we, we're giving them too many, too many yards and some, um, some key running plays, and then obviously that big play hurt us. So we eliminate the big plays. I think it'll be all right. Coach, thanks. thanks a lot for joining us at halftime. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Coach Dave Sara of Waynesburg. 7-7 seven, seven tie at halftime. Waynesburg at Wash High on the Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Crooks of Washington Chiropractic Center. With 27 years of clinical experience, we've treated everything from back pain to headaches, auto and work-related accidents, and sports injuries. Our goal? Get people better. We also have one of the most successful weight loss programs in the area. Whether you need to lose 20 pounds or 100 pounds, we can help. When you need effective chiropractic care or weight loss advice, remember, 27 years of experience does make a difference. Call us today or visit our website. 
If a quality collision repair is what you need, then give Tim at Woodhouse Auto Body a call. Crashes to dents, no job is too big or too small. With a full written warranty and more than 45 years combined experience, you can trust that your vehicle will look great without a long wait. And your insurance is no problem. We can even arrange for a rental car. Take your vehicle somewhere you can trust. Try the best at Woodhouse Auto Body. Minutes off I-70, Jessup Exit, or Jefferson to Weirick Avenue. Call Tim today. Have you quit smoking for someone you love? Have you convinced someone you love to quit smoking? Comcast and the Pennsylvania Department of Health want to hear about it. Log on to quit.spotlight.tv or write us at the address listed on the screen. Everyone who participates will receive a wristband as a memento and will be entered into a drawing to win one of three great prizes listed on the screen. If you're willing to share your story, we may put you on TV. Five winners will get to share their inspirational stories. Your story could be selected in tape for television to help others to quit. Well, starting off tonight's halftime show is the Wayne Waynesburg Central High School Marching Band. Now, this 70-member ensemble competed in the Fiesta Ball last year in Myrtle Beach and walked away with the title championship of that competition. Um, the Waynesburg High School Marching Band is under the direction of Doug Mason. His assistant is Jerry Edgreen, and the drum major this evening is Valerie Schultz. Right now, they are performing the hymn song of Philip Bliss. Next performance, they will be performing Scootin' on Hard Rock. come back after these messages we'll enjoy some homecoming activities right here at Washington High School you're watching Comcast High School football game of the week we'll be right back have you quit
quit smoking for someone you love? Have you convinced someone you love to quit smoking? Comcast and the Pennsylvania Department of Health want to hear about it. Log on to quit.spotlight.tv or write us at the address listed on the screen. Everyone who participates will receive a wristband as a memento and will be entered into a drawing to win one of three great prizes listed on the screen. If you're willing to share your story, we may put you on TV. Five winners will get to share their inspirational stories. Your story could be selected in tape for television to help others to quit. Comcast Cable, can I help you? Yeah, I found all these shows in On Demand. Uh-huh. Looks like a lot of them are free. They are, sir. Hundreds of shows at no extra charge, like PBS Kids, Food Network, Comedy Central. Sir? Get out. No, really, they're free. If you have Comcast Digital Cable, you have On Demand, with hundreds of free shows that you can start whenever you want. Really? Really. Get out. Just choose On Demand from the main menu. Comcast Digital Cable with On Demand. TV is now on your terms. Get out. Hey, mister, you know your license plate's expired? It is? Yeah, look. I'll take care of it after work, thanks. After work? Why wait till then when you can go to Joe Fitas? Joe Fitas? Yeah, Joe Fitas has all registration in all, and they can have you in and out less than 10 minutes. Wow, less than 10 minutes? Yeah, they also do non-commercial driver's licenses, registration renewals, and replacement stickers instantly. That's great. How do you know all this? My dad went to Joe Fitas after you pulled him over. Have a nice day. Classes along Welcome back to Comcast High School Football Game of the Week, everyone. I'm Valerie Doherty, and tonight we are out at Washington High School where the score stands tied at 7. Right now, we are in the middle of halftime, and it's homecoming, so you know what that means. It's time to crown the, the 2005 Washington High School homecoming court. Fred and Ben Staff. Lauren plays softball for the Twist League and is a member of the Washington High School volleyball team. She also serves as secretary of her freshman class. Tonight's second attendant, also representing the freshman class, is Miss Kayla Welling, daughter of Mark and Tammy Welling. She is escorted this evening by Derek Ford, son of Chris and Kelly Gosnell. Kayla plays softball for the Twist League and is a member of the Wash High Tennessee. Kayla is also the president of her freshman class. Our first sophomore attendant is Miss Jordan Jackson, daughter of James Jackson and Ramey Horner. Escorting Jordan is Michael Damaro, son of Harry and Peggy Damaro. This is Jordan's second year as a homecoming attendant. She is an active member of both the softball and basketball teams at Wash High. She is also the president of her sophomore class. Miss Dana Martinez, daughter of Theodore and Kimberly Martinez, is tonight's second sophomore attendant. Dana is escorted by Joseph Kittridge, son of Greg and April Kittridge. Dana is a member of Washington High School's varsity cheerleading squad. In addition to cheerleading, Dana is also a part of the Washington High School tennis team. This is Dana's second year as a homecoming attendant. Miss Vanessa Blackhurst, daughter of Tom and Karen Blackhurst, is the first junior attendant. Escorting Vanessa is Christopher Marasco, son of Dwayne and Jan Marasco. Vanessa is a member of the Key Club Homecoming Committee, Just Say No Sad, and the Student Council Executive Board. She also plays volleyball, basketball, and runs track for Wash Eye. Vanessa is a three-year homecoming court attendant. Our second junior attendant this evening is Miss Alyssa Rotunda, 
daughter of Frank and Tracy Rotunda. Melissa is escorted by Nate Ross, son of Dennis and Beth Ross. Melissa is a member of Just Say No, SAD, the Key Club, and the Prom Committee. She is a first-time homecoming attendant. is Miss Meredith Gaggin, daughter of Dan and Kathy Gaggin. Bill Becker, son of Bill and Tracy Becker, is escorting Meredith. Meredith is a member of the Wash High Marching Band, Steel Drum Band, and Wind Ensemble. She has performed with both the Pittsburgh Musical Theater and Wash High's Prexy Performers. Meredith is the Spanish Club Secretary, her homeroom representative, and is the president of the National Honor Society. Our second senior attendant is Miss Mindy Cass, daughter of Steve and Nancy Cass. Mindy's escort is Jacob Toon, son of Brad and Margaret Toon. Mindy is a member of the Student Council Executive Board. She is also active in the Prexy Performers Just Say No SAD Prom Committee and Homecoming Committee. Mindy is also a member of the National Honor Society. Tonight's third senior attendant is Miss Laura Monacalvo, daughter of Guy and Marie Monacalvo. Laura is being escorted tonight by Brett Ross, son of Mark and Cindy Ross. Laura is a member of the volleyball, basketball, and track team here at Wash High. Laura is also actively involved in Just Say No Sad, Spanish Club, the W Club, and is currently the treasurer of the National Honor Society. Additionally, Laura is on the student council and serves as secretary of her sophomore class. Miss Tara Peters is our next senior attendant tonight. Tara is the daughter of Don and Gina Peters. She is escorted this evening by Troy DeClaire, son of Joe and Patty DeClaire. Tara is a member of the cross country, cheerleading, and track teams at Wash High, and is a junior volunteer at the Washington Hospital. She is also a member of the W Club and the National Honor Society. Tara is actively involved in the student council at Wash High, serving as both a member of the executive board and as her senior class secretary. Kara represented her junior class as a prom court attendant last year and is now representing her senior class as a third year homecoming attendant. Our fifth and final senior tonight is Miss Katie Skagg, daughter of Gary and Susan Skagg. Katie is escorted by Jeremy Reck, son of Bob and Sandy Reck. Katie is a member of Just Say No SAD, the Student Helping Others Committee, Communities That Care, Key Club, the Prexy Performers, Future Teachers of America, Peer Jury, and the Spanish Club at Wash High. In addition to being a member of the Wash High Cheerleading Squad, Katie is also a member of the Cross Country and Track Team. She is a member of the Pipe Run 4-H Club and was recently crowned Washington County Dairy Princess. Katie also serves as the Vice President of the Washington High School Student Council. Crowning this year's homecoming queen is Miss Sherry Kroski, Washington High School's 2004 homecoming queen. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2005 
Washington High School homecoming queen is Laura Montecalvo. Congratulations to Laura Montecalvo, Washington High School's 2005 homecoming queen. I'm going to do the football team. Right now, presenting Laura with a game football is Abby Nicolella. Dr. Kelly Crooks of Washington Chiropractic Center. With 27 years of clinical experience, we've treated everything from back pain to headaches, auto and work-related accidents, and sports injuries. Our goal, get people better. We also have one of the most successful weight loss programs in the area. Whether you need to lose 20 pounds or 100 pounds, we can help. When you need effective chiropractic care or weight loss advice, remember, 27 years of experience does make a difference. Call us today or visit our website. Hey, mister, you know your license plate's expired? It is? Yeah, look. I'll take care of it after work, thanks. After work? Why wait till then when you can go to Joe Fetus? Joe Fetus? Yeah, Joe Fetus has our registration in us, and they can have you in and out in less than 10 minutes. Wow, less than 10 minutes? Yeah, they also do non-commercial driver's licenses, registration renewals, and replacement stickers instantly. That's great. How do you know all this? My dad went to Joe Fetus after you pulled him over. Have a nice day. Hey, Pittsburgh, watch the Steelers like never before. Now with Comcast Digital Cable, you can see the Steelers in heart-stopping high definition. And Comcast has Steelers VOD shows and highlights that are only available on cable, like Steelers TV on ESPN2 and extended game highlights on NFL Network On Demand. So if you're a Steelers fan, Comcast Digital Cable is your clear choice. Sign up for Digital Cable today and get six months of HBO, six months of Showtime, and six months of Stars Free. Comcast, official cable and internet sponsor of the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's a 7-7 ball game as we get set to start the third quarter of play here in Wash High. Chris Shublin with Guy Junker. Guy has Coach Earl Finney tonight in the coach's corner. Yeah, Earl, yeah, you've been here before for a long time coaching with Guy Montecavo and everything, but it can't be an easy situation with a teacher strike and everything, and I know Bill is probably uh, ripping his hair out not being able to be here tonight, but making the best of it so far. Well, there's no doubt about that, Guy. Uh, Bill's our leader. And uh, we've got to tackle a little bit better this second half. Uh, I think physically, I think uh, we're doing a pretty good job. But we have we have a lot of work yet to do. And uh, yes, you're right. It's been a tough situation because we need we need our leader here. But we're going to do the best we can. And uh, hopefully we come out because this is a, this is a playoff game for us. We must win this one to make to make the playoffs. Kind of ironic, Earl, the uh, two passes that I think of in the first half, Alex Evans threw a perfect spiral that was dropped, and the one that he threw that was a little bit wobbly turned out to be the touchdown. Yeah, yeah. Well, those things will happen in football. You know, sometimes good things happen, and sometimes uh, they don't. But what really hurt us was uh, right there at the end of the half when we scored on that punt return, sure. and we had a block on uh, in the back. on the, And then top it off, it was 20 yards away from the play. And I coach my kids never. I don't care. They can stand out there. I'll give them a ticket to go up into the stands and watch a game. Uh, <laughs> and you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. But they're over there trying to throw a block, and they hit somebody in the back, and that, that'll hurt you every time. Well, Earl, good luck. I know it's a tough situation to take over for Bill. Bill, good luck not just tonight but the rest of the season. Thanks for taking time to join us. I uh, thank you, Guy. Okay. Take care. Earl Finney joining us tonight on Coach's Corner. And his uh, little prexies are tied 7-7 with Waynesburg. Both of these teams still hoping to be playoff bound later this year. And we'll come right back for the start of the third period. Coming up next on the Comcast High School Football Game of the Week. 
Since 1895, Lennox has earned a reputation for innovation, reliability, and performance. At McKean Plumbing and Heating, we've earned a reputation for quality installation and service. And all Lennox home comfort products have earned the good housekeeping seal. McKean's has earned the respect of thousands of Washington County residents. So, remember Lennox. And McKean Plumbing and Heating, making homes comfortable for over 50 years. Now get up to 12 months, no payments, no interest. Have you quit smoking for someone you love? Have you convinced someone you love to quit smoking? Comcast and the Pennsylvania Department of Health want to hear about it. Log on to quit.spotlight.tv or write us at the address listed on the screen. Everyone who participates will receive a wristband as a memento and will be entered into a drawing to win one of three great prizes listed on the screen. If you're willing to share your story, we may put you on TV. Five winners will get to share their inspirational stories. Your story could be selected in tape for television to help others to quit. You know, I guess we are considered old-fashioned. Yeah, we believe in treating people right. The medicine shop is a reflection of our priorities. We'll fill your prescriptions on the spot for fast service, and we'll happily deliver to those who can't make it in. We even have a reminder service, so you never forget crucial refill dates. Sure, everyone takes an insurance card, but no one treats you better than the medicine shop. Make our medicine shop your medicine shop. Please stop in today. Cheering them on, Waynesburg's cheerleaders. Right now, it's a tie ball game as we head to the third period of play. 7-7. Joe Monroe got on the board first for Wash High. With 54 seconds to go, a 51-yard catch from Alex Evans. Budovich added the point after, and then Waynesburg scored with 7.56 to go in the second period. J.D. Higgins, the big bruiser back, seven-yard run. Nick Patton's kick tied it up at 7-all. And Guy Washington was close to blowing this game open. They missed a, a possible long ball. Uh, touchdown catch uh, that uh, just missed intended for C.J. Baker earlier in the game. There were a couple of passes to Baker uh, toward the end zone or in the end zone. Joe Monroe had a punt return for 42 yards that was called back. That would have been a touchdown, and uh, Budovich missed a scoring opportunity with 16 seconds left in the first half. A 30-yard field goal went awry. Yeah, the killer there was it would have been a shorter field goal, but a sack on the third down play pushed it back further. Washington receives to start the second half. And Monroe bobbles it, but finally picks it up. And Monroe is finally staggered at the 30-yard line and brought down on the play by Ben Haynes. As we take a look at some of the halftime numbers. First downs fairly even. Yardage on the ground favor of Washington. Yardage in the air definitely favor of Washington. And I said earlier, I thought the team that threw the ball better tonight would have uh, the better chance of winning this game because I think both of these teams will, will get done what they have to on the ground. Washington could have even uh, bigger passing numbers if not for the one drop by C.J. Baker. But it's all dead even as we start the second half. Montecalvo comes out wide to the left side now on first down for Wash High. They have a wingman to the right. He comes in motion. And that is Baker. And they're going to run the football. This is Epps who spins his way close to a first down at the 40 if he doesn't have it. I think he does, though, at the 40-yard line. Clint Potish was the first man in, and he had his arms actually around his waist in the backfield, Chris, and he'll probably be mad at himself for not being able to bring him down. And then Scott Throckmorton actually gets a hand on him right there to trip him up. But the pretty nice run there, but Potish mm, had him a chance to get him in the backfield and wasn't able to wrap him up, but that's not an easy thing to do. By the way, the homecoming queen, Laura Montecalvo, yeah. Guy Montecalvo's daughter. Guy no longer coaches here at Washington, did such a fabulous job uh, there for years. And of course, anybody named Guy is okay in my book. <laughs> he's now the head coach at Cannon McMillan. And he's another good guy. We Great can tell you that. He really is. Here's the toss. And this is Catlin spinning it around the right side, and he was taken right out of his boots on that play. Yeah, Higgins helped blow that.